Coming up, we look at Azure Stack Edge and its growing application for AI and machine learning workloads with the proof of concept that Heathrow Airport has started to prevent the illegal trafficking of wildlife parts, including endangered species, by inspecting passenger luggage for positive matches using Azure Custom Vision AI models running locally on Azure Stack Edge, all as part of Microsoft's AI for Good program. So today I'm joined by Matt McSpirit, a longtime Microsoft Mechanics host, also an expert in Azure Stack. Thanks for joining us on Microsoft Mechanics. Hello, it's good to be back. And thanks for joining us from home today. So I know that Azure running locally is kind of an area that you're an expert in as well. But before we go further, for those that are new to Azure Stack Edge, can you explain what that is? Yeah, absolutely. So Azure Stack Edge is part of our Azure Stack family, which can be used in a variety of ways. So firstly, there's Azure Stack Hub, which brings a select set of Azure services to a location of your choice, enabling you to leverage the power of Azure locally in a consistent manner, even completely disconnected from the internet. Then with Azure Stack HCI, you can consolidate virtualized apps in your data center or remote sites on modern hyper-converged infrastructure while easily extending up into Azure with services like Azure Site Recovery, Azure Monitor, Security Center, and more. And finally, if you deploy in workloads such as machine learning to the edge and need to avoid the latency caused by round-tripping data up to the cloud and back for processing, you can deploy Azure Stack Edge, placing compute power close to where you need it so that hardware accelerated data processing and AI inferencing can all be done locally. Now, the big advantage here is that management is all done remotely and centrally through Azure. Okay, and I know that we're starting to see different applications of this tech really across industries, but how is Azure Stack Edge then being piloted at London's Heathrow Airport? So the Azure AI customer engineering team, supported by the Microsoft AI for Good program, is working with Heathrow on a pilot to crack down on illegal wildlife trafficking, which today is a billion dollar industry. And what you can see here on the screen is, is a room at Heathrow Airport filled with some of the items that have been confiscated over the years. And whether that's from animals such as rhinos or leopards, which are sought after for their body parts, or animals that are becoming endangered, such as pangolins, considered medicinal and a delicacy in some cultures. And right now, today, the UK Border Force typically profile passengers based on flight routes that they may be taking, which are known for trafficking before going on and searching their bags. Got it, so it sounds like it's pretty manual and not a scalable way about doing things. Exactly right, and in, and in fact, even when luggage is scanned using powerful 3D X-ray technology, it's actually pretty hard to identify these illegal items. So for example, what I've got here is a raw scanner image, and you can see that there's a large object in the bag, but it really requires an expert to decipher what it really is. So they want to be able to use machine learning to be able to do the initial detection leading to a bag search by the agents. Okay, and I can imagine it would also cut out a lot of the time that uh, you would also take in terms of uh, going through all these different images and uh, it would optimize that process. Also, given just all the sheer magnitude of bags, the thousands of bags that are going through at peak periods in the airport, but how are they looking to potentially use technology then to address the problem? So the Azure AI customer engineering team has been working with uh, Heathrow to build a solution comprising 3D scanner combined with AI models created in Azure, and they're running those models locally on the Azure Stack Edge. So here's how it works. Once the luggage passes through the baggage scanner, it produces a 3D VTK image file. And this is open source technology. It's the same tech that's used for CT scans in hospitals. Now each scan's about 50 meg in size and the scanner saves that VTK file to its local storage. Now, at the same time, we've deployed the Azure Stack Edge for local compute, and this has got four containers, sync, pre-processing, model, and broker. Every 200 milliseconds, the sync container copies new scans from the X-ray scanner to the Azure Stack Edge device. The pre-processing container rotates the image into different angles, and it also filters the image based on particle density to filter out objects that are out of our range of interest, such as high density objects like metal or low density objects like clothes. Now we're looking for bones and, and this has a medium density so we can quickly detect organic matter. The model container then runs an AI model to investigate all the objects that have particle density similar to bones. 
Now, like a zoologist, it's been trained to determine that it's definitively a skull of the type we're looking for, rather than another object that might be mistaken for a skull. And once the model has made its verdict, the broker container manages the communication among the other containers all on that Azure Stack Edge device. The AI model's verdict is stored in an output folder, which is continuously synced with Azure Blob Storage. And we then use an Azure Logic app to update an Azure SQL database with the results. And this can then be read by an airport agent on their mobile power app to notify them of the likelihood of a positive match so that they can then go and investigate further. And this whole process just takes a few seconds. Okay, so what was the approach then uh, being used to build out and train these models? So data scientists build the model using the Azure Custom Vision Service. And this is a powerful pre-built machine learning model that Microsoft data scientists have built that you can customize to your specific needs. Now, here we've uploaded quite a few images to our data set to pre-train the model. And if I click into one of these, you'll notice that we've notated the image to train the model. And I can click around so you get an idea of what this looks like. I can also add more images to the data set. And you'll see here, I just uploaded two images that can be found at the bottom here. And I'll select this one. And to train and label the object, I just need to place focus on it and draw a rectangle around it. And in this case, because I trained the model previously, the model recognizes the object and it can be used to make predictions on the data set. And now that I've added more data, I can go ahead and train the model by selecting train. And this is going to take around five minutes to complete. So I've done this in advance. And here you can see the output here. Now, there are two important performance metrics to call out, precision and recall. Now, in this case, we have a high precision score of 93.6%, which means we aren't holding up airport security lines by falsely accusing travelers of smuggling. Now, at the same time, our recall metric score of 81.7% is a measure of how well the model has performed in identifying what we're looking for, in this case, animal schools. Now, both are high scores, which is great. But to put this to the test, I'll bring in an image that I save locally to see if the model recognizes what it's seeing. And here you can see that the model is 99.8% sure that there's a skull in the bag. But at the end of the day, this is an ongoing battle. Traffickers are always going to find ways to disguise their efforts. So we need to continually retrain the models to ensure the high performance of the service. How do you then, or what do you need to deploy, I guess, in order to get that onto the Azure Stack Edge device? Right, so once I'm happy with performance, I can export the model to run on our Edge device. So here you can see a complete set of options. The Onyx runtime, for example, is useful if you have a diverse set of execution environments. Now I'm going to select the Docker container format to deploy my ML model as a container on my Azure Stack Edge device. We're running Linux on this Edge device, so I'll pick Linux as my version and then select Export. And this is going to take a while, so I've done this already. Now instead, I'll, I'll switch over to Visual Studio Code to show you how we can use the IoT extension to update the Edge device by selecting Build and Push IoT Edge Solution. Now, it knows to look for a deployment template. Since we only have one in our repository, it selects that one automatically. But you can see here that it, it runs very quickly because in this case, it's just updating the model. It's looking into the various Docker files we have and, and checking for any changes. But because only the model has changed and not the other containers, you'll see that it's returned some layer already exists messages. But in the background, it's built a template with the updated Docker images and pushes them up to the Azure Container Registry so that they're available for our Edge device to then pull them down. Now, now that that's done, I can deploy this to our target Edge device. I'll look for the template that we just created, which, the, which has the configurations of, of each container and their relationships. And, and this runs almost instantly. And we see a message here that the deployment has succeeded. OK, so what's actually going on then on the Edge device itself? If I go to IoT Hub and I click into IoT Edge, and select our IoT Edge device. You can see here our four containers, sync, model, pre-processing, and broker uh, are all running. And we can also see the Edge uh, agent, which allows us to manage the containers on the device remotely and centrally from IoT Hub. How do we know then that all of this is actually up and running and working? As we saw, you can, you can see the Edge containers running, but we can also SSH into the Edge device to see the logs. And in fact, we can see in this section here, the modules on the Edge device that have been stopped and restarted, which is a good sign that things are running. 
Now, we can also look at the output of the pre-processing module. So we're simulating the scanner, placing an image into the folder on Azure Stack Edge every few milliseconds. It syncs for a second and then copies a new file over. And the pre-processing container then identifies these new files and sends them over to our custom vision machine learning model for identification. Next, I can also look at the log file of our model. And we can see the activity where it's assessed the images and it's returning its predictions. It writes a, a verdict to an output folder that syncs up to Azure Blob Storage, as I described earlier. And here is our Azure Logic app that monitors the container in Azure Blob Storage for the new content. It lists the files and passes the JSON. And then for every entry in the JSON file, it populates a field that's updated in our SQL database. This is connected to the Power App used by our border control agents who get alerted of the positive results. I switch over to the, the Power App. You can see the experience for the border control agent on their cell phone or tablet. And as I hit enter, you can see the results of the last runs and I can see the results of the most recent runs. I can view the images of the, the suitcase. I determine for myself whether or not this looks suspicious and or whether or not this looks like a positive match. And if it's correct, I can confirm by selecting item identified. And this now can be added to the training data set. Okay, so what's the setup and management experience then look like here? Well, before we set up and manage the device, we need to order one. So here I am in the Azure portal and I'm on the uh, Azure Stack Edge getting started page. And you can see I just provide a subscription where the device will be registered for billing and a country for shipping. When I click show devices, you'll see I've got a couple of choices. The currently available Azure Stack Edge with FPGA, but you'll also notice here in preview is the Azure Stack Edge with GPU, which will ship with an NVIDIA T4 GPU to handle the hardware acceleration, something we're all incredibly excited about. Now, the final steps involve providing a few more details about the resource group in Azure, a shipping address, and that's it. The device will show up uh, not long after. Now, once received, connected, activated, and updated, you'll have a couple of simple steps to perform in order to configure the Azure Stack Edge device for compute capabilities. You'll want to follow the guided wizards along with our docs to set up your scenario, which in our case is compute. So under compute, it first advises you to obtain modules from the Azure Marketplace or publish your own modules or containers to the Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub. Now we used Visual Studio Code for this earlier, which made things really easy. And from there, we guide you through connecting to either an existing or a new IoT hub to communicate with the IoT Edge runtime running on the device itself. Now this takes a few minutes, but you can see here my completed configuration. Now, depending on your scenario, you might want to set up some file shares on the device. They're required if you want to process and then potentially upload data like we saw with Heathrow. And you'll see it's a simple wizard too. Add a name, type, storage account, user privilege, very easy stuff. You're then at a point where you're actually deploying the modules or containers as we saw earlier. And all of this is done remotely and centrally from the Azure portal. This is really amazing stuff and a great application of AI for good, but what's next then for this? So we're working to customize the models further to reduce false positives and apply them to a broader range of wildlife. We started with animal schools, but we're now extending the effort to identify pangolins and bats. And we plan to share the solution pattern and AI models we've developed with other interested airports. And lastly, one other positive outcome besides benefiting wildlife is we're working with Heathrow to look at how this new capability can be used to combat other high harm threat types. For instance, weapons carried in baggage. So for those people that are interested or watching today and want to build out similar solutions, where do you recommend they go to get started? Well, firstly, I recommend getting familiar with IoT Edge, and you can learn more at aka.ms slash IoT Edge. Also, you can order an Azure Stack Edge device and try it out for yourself at aka.ms slash Stack Edge. And if you've got a project for our Azure AI customer engineering team and AI for Good program to consider, we've placed their contact details in the description of this video. Thanks again for joining us today, Matt. And also, of course, keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest tech updates across Microsoft. That's all the time we have for this show. See you next time. Goodbye for now.